Okay, with God's help, we learned up to now in this book, <clears throat> which is called Torah Or, <clears throat> the interpretation of the first Rebbe of Chabad. Excuse me one second. Who he, like all the Rebbe's of Chabad, is the Mashiach of that generation. And Mashiach is not some person that's going to come <clears throat> floating from heaven, touch everybody on their forehead, <clears throat> and they'll all suddenly be blessed. Exactly the opposite. The Mashiach is going to be somebody that's going to come on the earth and he's going to open up everybody's mind from the inside and show them they already were blessed all the time. Everyone who was already blessed, everybody that's alive is blessed with life. And the idea of Mashiach is to come to understand that people will start to understand what life really is and how the Torah <clears throat> is the direction of life and it's the source of life and it's God's will and God's wisdom and God's essence in the physical world. And God really wants us to, to be his partners. And that's why we're here. And Mashiach will just open up everybody's eyes to that fact and teach everyone how to do it. And sometimes that will require also inspiring people to do things that they don't necessarily want to do. You know, I can, you can imagine going, let's say, in, in communist Russia, right, in the, in the 20s, and suddenly convincing Stalin or whatever, all these people, that communism wasn't good, was not a good thing, and that they should worship God. I mean, that was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> communism was like human nature at its worst. But they all believed in it. Everyone fervently believed. Children were giving, were, 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 were how do you say, informing on their parents to the government. They were, <clears throat> the people so much believed in this false belief. <clears throat> and Mashiach is just going to come and take away all these false beliefs because inside of everybody, there is this tendency to be drawn after false, false, how do you say, false, falseness, lies. And basically, that's what it says. We brought so many times the prophecy of Jeremiah that's brought down also on the Rambam, that Mashiach is going to come and show all of the world <clears throat> that their religions are false, that the founders of their religions lied to them. Shecher nachalu avotehem. Now, who would believe that? I mean, you go into, into communist Russia and tell everybody at that time, you know, that, that Stalin was a liar. <laughs> Who would believe it that, that Karl Marx was, was wrong? Right? And so it is with all these different religions that are in the world to tell them that their leaders are going to kill you. <clears throat> because people believe in false things. And Mashiach is going to come and he'll just educate the world and tell everybody how precious they really are, that God is creating them, and that they're really very valuable to God. And they just have to express and, how do you say, utilize their life properly. So he's going to teach everyone. So it's going to begin with the Jews. And that's what we said, that Moses was a shepherd and that he <clears throat> oh, and that he just uh, fed the natural connection that every Jew has with God. And the Jewish people then are the examples to the whole entire world. Shalom, Dobby. Good morning. <clears throat> Okay, so that's, now we're going to go back to, if we remember, that's what we learned last time, that that's the whole idea of Moses. There has to be a Moses in every generation because Moses gives a thing, he, he gives a thing called da'at. Da'at means connection to the truth. Da'at means connection to, to God, to the creator. Excuse me. That's, what, that's the whole idea of Moses. And he said, that's the idea of mishpatim. These are the laws you should put in front of them. Laws in Hebrew are also called halachot. Halachot is the same letters as halichot, to walk. Moses makes everybody dynamic, mobile, active. <clears throat> because the, the essence of Judaism is this physical world, to improve this physical world. This is the place where God wants. God purposely made and is making this world every instant and he put us in it because he wants us to be here he wants us to reveal the true potential in this world not an easy thing to do but we had to do it like people who are let's say 
<clears throat> there are some people who are natural. We talked about this before, natural in sports. Some people are naturally good in basketball or naturally good in, you know, in, in music. They're naturally, but they have to work really hard. Those people work tremendously hard. Those, the, 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 the uh, <clears throat> you know, the concert pianists, they have to like practice 10 hours a day or something. The, 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 the professional tennis players, same thing. They have to <clears throat> practice without the end. <clears throat> it could be that once they get the knack, then they don't have to practice so much anymore. But in other words, my point is, is to bring out the good in us requires a lot of work and it requires a lot of encouragement and direction. And that's what Mashiach is going to do. Mashiach is going to be the one who's going to pull everyone into <clears throat> true meaning. Not to push everybody. He's not going to be a dictator to push everybody. His whole thing is just to convince us who we are and that will pull us to higher awareness of being a, a partner with God. And that's what we learned up to now. And that's how our Torah portion starts off. That was a question we had. We had a question, if you remember. <clears throat> The, 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 how do you say the, it seems that there's a, a grammatical <clears throat> aberration. Something's wrong in the first sentence of this Torah portion. God says to Moses, these are the laws you should put in front of them. In front of them. And then afterwards, it says in singular, <clears throat> when you take a Jewish servant, it should say you plural, or when they take a, so it should be plural. Why does it <coughs> say you, singular, right? It says these are the laws you should put in front of all the Jewish people, in front of them. And then it says when you, singular, <coughs> take a Jewish servant. So either we have to say it's a, it's a grammatical error because simply meaning, it, it, a simple meaning doesn't really, it's not really proper. Or we have to say, that there's a deeper meaning hidden here. <clears throat> and because God is writing this, so it can't be that there's a grammatical error. And it also cannot be that it was maybe it was passed down through the generations, a grammatical error. Someone would have <clears throat> <coughs> commented, the Jewish people, if you've ever learned the Talmud, then you'll see that nothing goes by without being questioned. The, the slightest <clears throat> seeming dissonance in the Torah is immediately questioned by 15 people. There's no such thing as something getting by. Right? The one person stands up and says, I am the truth. This is the way it is. Listen to every word. Even Moses, when he spoke, everybody's asking questions. <clears throat> the essence of Judaism is to ask questions. To be, it doesn't depend on the answers, but nevertheless, asking questions is a very good thing. And on this, nobody asks any questions. This is it. <clears throat> it's the simple meaning Everybody knows Moses is speaking to all the Jewish people. Why does it say in singular? Because it's a deeper meaning. What's the meaning? This is talking about Moses. God is saying to Moses, when you, Moses, when you buy a Jewish servant, doesn't it when you buy a Jewish servant, when you take possession of a Jewish servant, who is this Jewish servant? <coughs> That's the job of Moses to make every Jew a Jewish servant. How does he make it? By purchasing him, by taking possession. How do you take possession? Listen to this. Sometimes it says that God is Kone Shemayim Oretz. <clears throat> Sometimes it says that God, he possesses the heavens and the earth. Sometimes it says by God, Kone Hakol, that he possesses everything. Same thing. But other times it says, Bore Shemayim Oretz. It says that God creates the heavens and the earth. Bore Hakol, that he creates everything. So what does it mean? God creates everything? If so, if he creates everything, it's his. Or does it say that he possesses everything? Possesses everything means that it's not his, but he takes possession of it. <coughs> Which one is true? Obviously, if God creates everything, then he doesn't have to possess everything. <coughs> and on the other hand, if the Torah says that God possesses everything, it means that he doesn't create everything. Because if, if he creates everything, why does he have to possess it? <coughs> Take possession. So the answer is like this. 
Yesh Bechinas, there is a level, Shanikra Derech Seder Hishtalshlut. There is, <clears throat> if you look at the worlds, you'll see, in, especially in Kabbal, Kabbalah books, it talks about the upper worlds. Hishtalshlus me'ila le'ila. A chain of creation from a higher level to a lower. <clears throat> In other words, when God began to create the world, he created levels, dimensions, which are, so to speak, closer to him, less limited. <clears throat> and then those levels, from those levels came lower levels that are more limited and, so to speak, less godly, et cetera, et cetera, till it, till it came down to this physical world, where this world is totally limited and almost completely not godly. You can't see any godliness in the world at all. <clears throat> That's one. That's called Seder Hishtalshlus, the or the chain, Hishtalshlus is like a chain, the chain of creation from a higher level to another level, below it. The Yesh Bechin, and there is a level, there is another way <clears throat> of looking at the world, Shenikra, which is called Lamayla Midirach Seder Hishtalshlus, which is above any sort of chain of creation. This is the whole idea that God creates and that he possesses. What does it mean? That that God creates everything means that he creates everything from nothing to something. Something from nothing. What does it mean, something from nothing? This is above any sort of chain of creation. We cannot imagine what this means. That's the whole big difference between science and Judaism. Science says there can't be such a thing as nothing. And if there is such a thing as nothing, then <laughs> nothing can come from it, right? Nothing can't create something. How can nothing create? If it's nothing, then how is it going to create anything? There's, no, there's nothing there. So you can't make something from nothing. There's no such thing as nothing. There has to be a vacuum, a black hole, a negative, a something, a big bang. There has to be something, an ether, a primordial ether. Remember <clears throat> the Greek philosophers? There has to be a primordial substance or whatever it is. Basically, that's what science says. There has to be something. Because if there's nothing, then science can't deal with nothing. <laughs> science can't deal. Science deals with into relationships. That's what science deals with. You have something, you have me, and how does that something affect me? Or how does that something affect something else? Or whatever. Some, there has to be two somethings, at least one something. I, 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 and says, no, Judaism says no, that before the world was created, there was no thing. There was no vacuum, there was no absolute zero, there was no black holes, there was no anything. What does that mean? What does that mean there was no nothing? What it means is that we, our comprehension <clears throat> can't really comprehend true reality. We're, after all, we ourselves are just being created. <clears throat> well, we can't, how can, if we ourselves are being created and our mind is being created, there's no way that we can really understand the creator. Not only that, according to Judaism, we're being created constantly. Time itself is a creation. And so who is bringing this nothing into something? God. So oh, oh there, so God is a something, right? No, no, no. Not. God creates all existence. God does not really exist in any way that we can possibly imagine what God is. But on the other hand, here we see there's a world and God is creating it. So it must be something. And it says in the Bible that we're created in God's image. That also must mean something. It says that what it says that we're created in God's image and that God creates the world, what it says in the Bible that's called the Seder Shalos. That's the order of creation. But the fact of the matter is, is that God personally himself is not, has nothing whatsoever to do with the whole creation. He is not a creation. He is not an existence. He's not spiritual. All these things are creations of God. We have no idea what we're talking about here. But the, that's, the, that's God. That's what we, that's believing. That's the God that took us out of Egypt. That's the God that gave us the Torah. That's the God that creates the world. <clears throat> says, but there's two ways which are called in creation. One which is sort of comprehensible. That's what all the Kabbalistic books talk about. And that's called the order, the chain of creation. 
from spiritual to less spiritual to less spiritual, and finally, the physical. And But then there's another way, that everything there is, spiritual, physical, it's all being created from nothing. Ki, hanivra, because a creation, eino aruch, it cannot be compared at all to the creator. In kein, if so, hitabut hanivra, the fact that we exist, he hitchadshut, this is a totally novel thing, yesh me'ayin, <coughs> something from nothing. V'zehu bore, that's what it means, that God creates everything. But after God creates everything, that's how the Torah starts off. Breshi Bora says in the beginning, God created, that's everything. And then afterwards, God brought it out little by little, the first day, the second day, the third. Afterwards, Yesh Gamkin, there's also what's called the chain of creation of the worlds. Zem one from the other. Derech Ilova Alo, which is by cause and effect. Kone, that's what's called that God possesses. Creating means God creates everything from nothing. That which God takes possession means that the world seems to be something separate from God, but God takes possession of it. That when you purchase something, when you take something into your possession, it's nothing new. It already was there. When you buy something, you purchase something, you take possession means that the thing was in someone else's possession, and then you pulled it into your possession somehow or other. Either you went and physically took possession of it, or you have a deed of possession, but nevertheless, you are now the boss over this thing, a car. You didn't create the car. The car belonged to someone, or the car was, previously it was just iron, whatever, and in the factory they made it into a car, and then you took possession of it. Now you're the boss of it. (coughs) So it was in one form, and it just came into another, retained its form, or even if it changed its form, but it didn't come from nothing, and you just took possession of it. That's the same thing is when we say God creates everything, that's from nothing. Everything is being created by nothing. On the other hand, everything, when God creates everything, it seems that it really exists separately. That's what God wants. And after that, there's another process, which is called God possessing it. <clears throat> Namely, that the thing moves from the domain of one domain to another domain. Shemetchila, <coughs> then the beginning, Oya, Sechora, Munachat, what's this? Oya, Sechora, in the beginning, the merchandise was Munachat Bakufsa. It was in a box, in the, in the, whatever it's in the shipping yard, Eitzelamokher, by the salesman, but when you take possession of it, you pay him money, whatever, then look at then it becomes mine. I can put the keys in it and drive away. It's now mine. Cain, <clears throat> but what's this got to do with the world? ilo So it is when God makes the, what's called the result from the cause, right? The spiritual world's cause, the physical world, so to speak. is nothing new. Ki lahavos to make something new. Only God can do it. But when God creates the world, cause and effect, spiritual levels, to lower spiritual levels, to lower spiritual levels, this is called the chain of creation. This is just revealing something that was hidden. For instance, when a person speaks, the words come out from his thought and are revealed. That's so to speak, that's like taking possession. I'm standing here, I'm listening to the rabbi speak. The rabbi speaks, the words come out of his mind and come into my ears. Now they become mine. That's so to speak, to make a take possession of something. <clears throat> and this it says, Kone, I call it, says that God takes possession of everything. <clears throat> he draws everything from concealed to be revealed. After everything was already created from nothing. Then there's taking possession. <clears throat> when it's drawn from concealed to be revealed. Okay, what's talking about? What's the Rebbe talking about here? <clears throat> God creates the world, right? He creates the world. And according to the Torah, God is creating the world all the time. He's creating everything from nothing. And everything is a big miracle. But he's creating a world. 
and God wants there to be a world. And that's the whole story of the Torah. He creates man, he puts him in the world. And man knows without any doubt that God created him. And nevertheless, he did what he wanted to. He's separate, does what he wants. Man is separate. <clears throat> He's separate. Is he really separate from God? No, but God made it in such a way that man seems to be separate totally from his creator. He doesn't feel that God is creating him. <coughs> if anything, he feels that he comes from some spiritual levels. Alder says, similarly, you then we can understand what it means. When it says God is telling to Moses, when you take possession of a Jewish servant, it says, it says, on the other side of the river, your forefathers lived. Right? Abraham was called Avram or Ivri. He was the first Jew. Ivri means Hebrew. <clears throat> Where did he come from? Why? Because he came from the other side, Me'aver, Ivri. He was the first Hebrew. He came from the other side of the river. What's this river? The river, this is the river that it says in the beginning of the Torah, the river that came out from Aden. And it watered the Garden of Eden. Now, Garden of Eden, that's heaven. The river is a flow of godliness which comes down into heaven. What is Eden? What's the source? <coughs> that's what it says in the Zohar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Parshat Emor. That this river is the level of Bina, of Atzilut. A little bit of Kabbalah here. Atzilut is the highest of the four dimensions of reality, the highest. It's called the world of godliness. And Bina is one of the 10 sphero, 10 of the aspects that's in this, <clears throat> this dimension of godliness. Bina corresponds to understanding. And this Bina, <clears throat> which is in Atzilut, the highest dimension, this is drawn down into the second highest dimension of reality, Atzilut. What's below Atzilut? The world of Bria. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's what it means, Misham Yipored. That's what it means that this Bina, this is the river that comes from Atzilut. Atzilut is going to be another name for Eden. We'll see. <clears throat> this comes down into the next lowest dimension, which is called Bria. Bria means the world of creation. There already becomes separation, division, <clears throat> plural. Plurality. The Aver Anar, the Jews, they come from the other side of the river. This is what's above this river of understanding of Atzilut. This is above Enu, the Jewish people. They come from any a level which is above this river, which is understanding, above any sort of <clears throat> intelligence or comprehension. Sham Yashvu, that's the source of the Jews, and that's the root of the Jews. That's why Abraham <coughs> is called the first Jew, because he served God in a way which was totally irrational, according to world standards. Rak Masha, Yordu and the Shamas, but after the souls came down until the souls are called Zerubbabel. Remember, that's how we talked about that's the majority, 99.99% of even the Jewish people, God's people. The people have awareness. They come from this other side of the river. They're attached to above understanding, to God's essence. But when they come down into the world, then they are like animals. It's called zero behema, that they have no comprehension anymore, feeling of God anymore. And Moses has to give it to them. We'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> <clears throat> Says the spark of godliness, which is the Jewish people that comes from the other side of the river, the other side above understanding. This is the spark of godliness, which is drawn below. <clears throat> On this, it's relevant to say that Moses has to kone, <clears throat> that he has to take purchase. <clears throat> but the essence of the Jewish soul, as it is in its source, this is called Averanar. This is called above understanding. This is above the whole chain of creation. 
Adam v'bayim ashovim. And so at Shasham, the there, this level of Adam and Bahama are the same. <clears throat> it's not relevant to know God or not to know God. It's just an obvious feeling. Shove umash v'katan gadol, that small and big are the same. <clears throat> It's almost like asking a person, a, a tremendously genius person and a tremendously stupid person, how do you know that you're alive? They'll say, what type of a question is that? I don't understand. How do you know you're alive? How do you know you're alive? <clears throat> because you can see there's people that are blind. They know they're alive. You can hear that people that are, how do you know you're alive? He says, I don't know. What are you talking about? It's just an obvious thing. I'm alive. I mean, who are you talking to? You're talking to some, obviously I'm alive. I just feel it. I know it. <clears throat> and maybe it's your imagination. Okay, but there's a me that's imagining. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't make any difference if a person is small or big. When you talk about life, life is the same. Being alive. It's forbidden to kill a, a, I mean, <clears throat> a, a, a stupid person like it's forbidden to kill a great person. It's forbidden to kill a poor person. So it gets forbidden to kill a rich person. Maybe Bill Gates will disagree, but that's the fact. <clears throat> Life is something which makes big and small equal. <clears throat> when the Jewish soul is in its source, it's in the source of life, then there's no what we call seed of man, seed of animal. Just pure awareness of the creator, of the truth. In in order to draw down awareness of God to those souls like us that we're called the seed of animal that we don't really feel God because that's the, what it is in our soul so we don't have to create anything God doesn't, all Moses has to, has to do is just pull it <clears throat> from the hidden into the revealed from one domain into the other all Moses has to do is just draw down what is concealed in every Jewish soul, namely an attachment to the essence of God, to the source of all life, to the reason of life, which that's the essence of every Jew, Avrilanar. On the other side of understanding, above understanding, all Moses has to do is to pull it down to reveal the Jews who they really are. Laham Sheikh Mishorshu to draw it down from their source, Shuba Avrilanar, which is on the other side of the river. <clears throat> it's like taking a person in, 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 in the garbage, whatever, and say, have you, excuse me, have you got any identification? I don't have that. I don't even know what identification is. They please take him down to the station. They take his fingerprint and they say, one second, you know, you know who you are. You are the, the son of a multi-billionaire. You have billions of dollars in the, in the bank. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And they go and they test this DNA. What do they test? And they find that's who he is. And now he just has to go to the bank and take out the money. The same thing, that's what Moses does. Moshe's thing is he comes to every Jew and says, hey, you're a Jew. You have billions of dollars spiritually in your account. <clears throat> I just have to identify you. As soon as we're sure you, yes. Okay, now all you have to just draw it down. Draw it down, this feeling of godliness. That's what it means, ever and ar. <clears throat> Shasham, there is what's called Das Gadol. Then suddenly, from this level, a person becomes aware, wow, I am the servant of the king of the universe. That's my true identity. I am aware there is a king of the universe. He's creating everything. And I am a servant. I'm a Jew. I didn't know. That's the job of Moses, to reveal what is concealed in the heart of every Jew. Kenyan, kitikne. When the Jew realizes what that is, then he becomes a Jewish servant of the creator. Nothing better than that. I think we talked about this a lot of times. That was one of the big, how do you say, <clears throat> big, uh, how do you say, selling points of communism. Conquered the minds of hundreds of millions of people. Everyone will work. Everyone will express their abilities. Ooh, this fired up the imaginations, the hearts and the souls of hundreds of millions of people. Everyone will work according to their ability. Work, a person loves to work. They want to work. They want to feel productive. That's why man was created, to be productive, to give something.
<clears throat> that's what's called making everyone. <clears throat> that's what Moses wanted to do, to make everyone aware of who the boss is, who they really are. <clears throat> <clears throat> making that Kenya to draw down godliness. That there in the source of the Jewish soul, there is a tremendous awareness. Rakshas and Nelam, it's just totally com concealed from the spark of godliness, uh, which is called the Jewish soul, which comes down into these lower three worlds, Bria, Yitzira, and finally Asiya. And you have to draw from this, from the concealed, to be revealed. That's what it means, Kitikne Evadivri. That's what Moses does. He takes possession. He draws this godliness into the possession of every single Jew. This is much, much easier than if there has to be a brand new creation. <clears throat> so in other words, every Jew essentially already is a servant of the creator of the universe. And every Jew essentially is connected. <clears throat> His soul is one with <clears throat> the infinite God that's creating all being. The God that took us from Egypt, the God that gave us the Torah. That's the same God that's keeping us alive. That's the same God that made this thing of the Jewish people. <clears throat> Just like there was a holy temple, and the holy temple, the inner room was revealed, the essence of God, so it is with every Jew. And just as it was in the holy temple that only the high priest could go in, that was the thing of Moses. But the difference is, is that Moses made it revealed that every Jew is a holy temple. And every Jew has a holy of holies, but he drew this from concealed to be revealed. <clears throat> okay, so that's what it means that God is telling Moses, when you take possession of a Jewish servant, you are there to activate all the Jews, to tell the Jews who they really are. What does it say afterwards? It says six years they should work. Right? If you, we said that a Jew can sell himself to be a servant. A servant. But he can't serve more than six years. <clears throat> Unless in extenuating circumstances, if the Jew, the servant, this Jewish servant decides he wants to stay longer, <clears throat> and then he can stay up until the Jubilee year. But that's very unusual. <clears throat> Usually works for six years. Doesn't make any difference if one of those years is the sabbatical year, the Shemitah year. He works for six years. Unless the Jubilee year comes before, right? If he sells himself into servitude, let's say two years before the Jubilee year, the, the, the 50th year, the Yovel, then he goes free then. But six years he served. What does it mean? Now let's, let's apply this to what we just finished learning. <coughs> <coughs> we just finished learning that this is a directive from God to Moses, that Moses, the job of Moses, the job of Moshe, is to make the Jewish people into Jewish servants of God. How does he do this? By making a Kenyan, a possession. He brings that every single Jew simply takes possession of his godly soul, the essence of his godly soul, <clears throat> which as soon as a person is put into the world, the essence of the Jewish soul remains in the domain, so to speak, of God. And Moses is the one that has to draw it down, take it from the domain of God, and put it into the domain of every single Jew. <clears throat> and then afterwards, he works for six years. What does this mean? Perush, al that went after a Jew is brought to, <clears throat> to awareness of his true essence of his soul, which is connected to the essence of God. When Moses accomplishes this, then then there can be, bechinat, the Jew can be, the Avdot to serve God. Liot Ovid Elohim to serve the creator of the universe. Sheish Hefesh God, there's a big, big difference between Ovid Elohim, the one who serves God, and one who does not serve God. This is explained in the Tanya, in the 15th chapter of the Tanya. <clears throat> what does it mean? According to Judaism, Mashiach is coming to the world to make everybody crazy. Crazy for the creator of the universe. <clears throat> to want to improve this world without resting, without eating, without any, just improving the world, bringing blessing into the world. 
That's what's called a Jewish servant. <clears throat> God comes. God wants every Jew to be dynamic, and from then we'll learn from we'll learn the whole world. <clears throat> that's what it means, a servant of God. There's a difference between a person who's a servant of God and a person who does not serve God. What does it mean? It says in the Tanya, a servant of God is a person that's constantly changing his nature, constantly improving himself, constantly doing more than what's expected of him, constantly not only changing his emotions, but changing the nature of his emotions. The thing should be more for the creator to realize more how real God is, how good God is, how infinite God is, and how he wants us to be real and infinite and good just like him. <clears throat> how can that be? Afterwards, we're only creations. So the answer is, is we have to <clears throat> constantly improve. That's what's called the servant of God. One who does not serve God is a person who stops improving himself, right? He's going to go to heaven. He'll get all the rewards. We're not, the Tanya doesn't talk about going to heaven or hell. We're not talking about that. <clears throat> According to the Tanya, the, the book, the Tanya, it could be a, that a person will be called a tzaddik by everybody else and he'll go to the highest levels of heaven. But according to the stands of the Tanya, this person is called a rasha. He's called bad. Why? Because he allows himself to do what he wants to once in a while. He lets his mind sort of wander, doesn't stop himself, right? There's no big, that's no big crime. The person is a, a, a Torah scholar and he does good deeds and everything. But once in a while, <clears throat> he lets himself go a little bit. That Everybody does that. Says a person like that will go to heaven. And it could be that he's going to be called a tzaddik. But according to the Tanya, that person is called a rush. <clears throat> and even if he controls himself all the time, but he doesn't improve himself, so he's called a person that's not really serving God. Shu tzaddik. <clears throat> Hagam, this person that doesn't serve God, even though that he's called a tzaddik, like it says in the Gomorrah, and it's brought in the Tanya also. <clears throat> but what does it mean to be a servant of God? It says, Yomim Yotzoro, that God gave everybody a certain number of days. Because see, Avram Zakin Bobiyomim, it says Abraham was old and he was coming in days. That Abraham used every moment, every day of his time. I know. These are the garments which are made to the soul from the Torah and the commandments every single day of a person's life. <clears throat> That's why people are given a certain amount of time to live, to use the time in order. Time changes, right? That every moment presents its challenges, its opportunities to serve the creator of the universe. <coughs> and if a person is lacking one day, belay mitzvah without a commandment, so, so to speak, he's missing a garment. That these garments, that the soul is able to get pleasure from the ziva the shechina. <clears throat> to be united with called the body of the king. There has to be garments. What, what's happening over here? The soul, after, after a person dies, so the soul goes into the to heaven. Okay, now a soul is used to be connected to enliven a body. And the way the soul works, if it's a healthy soul, a healthy body, so it connects to the body and they become one. They become one. They become one. And the soul becomes uni unified with the body, and the body becomes unified with the soul. The question is, what's going to dominate? The idea is supposed to be that the soul dominates over the body. But nevertheless, the body and the soul are two separate entities. After the soul dies, it goes up to heaven. The soul is used to having some sort of garments. In the world, the garments are the body. What if the soul leaves? What type of garments can it have? In, in heaven, there's no physical garments. So it says the garments that the soul has are the good deeds that it did. <clears throat> because when a person does something good, that good deed, even though it seems to us it's temporarily, temporary, right, to put on to fill, and it takes two minutes, three minutes, it seems it's a temporary thing, but really it's infinite. We don't really know what infinite means, but that's the fact. It's infinite. <clears throat> something like the soul is infinite. 
right? With the, with the same soul, when a person is born, he's 95 years old, he's got the same soul. So also the good deeds that he does, those good deeds remain. By a Jew, the good deeds are also Torah and the commandments. That's at a higher level of good deeds, but it's still basically the same thing. Those good deeds that a Jew does, Torah and the commandments, they become the garments for his soul. And if the soul is missing one day, he's missing a garment. It's like a person going out when it's really cold and he forgot one of his gloves. So he's not protected. He can't take it. <clears throat> or a person is, the, the, someone's giving out the, the million, hundred dollar bills and he's got a big hole in his sack. So he can't accept the, all this money. It, it's just falling through. Same thing, the soul goes up to the heaven and it has to have a garment in order to get this revelation of godliness, right? It has to have sunglasses in order to, <clears throat> to perceive <clears throat> the godliness there. The sunglasses, the garment, whatever metaphor you want to use, that's the good deeds that he does. Especially the good deeds that he does in Torah and commandments. Shashor Shem Naila, that the source is very high. This comes from the Gufa the Malka. This is, so to speak, the body of the king. The commandments are called the body of God. Why? Because God has, that there are 248 positive commandments. That corresponds, corresponds to the 248 positive, <clears throat> so to speak, limbs of God, aspects of God's will. That's what it means that man is created in God's image. Another meaning. <clears throat> that just like God has 248, <clears throat> so to speak, uh, aspects of his will, and those are expressed in the 248 positive commandments, is also every Jew has 248 limbs of his body. <clears throat> they come down to be garments. And this is like an example of a mushal. This is what's called a, a, a metaphor. What's a metaphor? A metaphor, an example. A metaphor, what does it mean? <clears throat> You have a big professor, he wants to explain something to you, and he can't explain it. There used to be a movie, a cartoon from Walt Disney, explaining <clears throat> of, uh, 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 Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh, it was very simple, a man standing on a dock, and the train is moving, he doesn't know is the dock moving, is the train, Any, everything is relative to everything else. But, but he made it into very simple <clears throat> um, uh, metaphors and examples so you could understand it. <clears throat> the same thing is God. We want to try to understand God a little bit. To understand God, we have to understand God. So God sends us all sorts of metaphors, a beautiful sunset, a, 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 a child laughing, a, 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 somebody gets sick, he gets well, right? Happy things. God sends us a, 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 a volcano, the power of God. Those are metaphors. But those are very weak metaphors. It's very, very... And you see, like, for, for God for dummies, right? A beautiful sunset. Those are nice things, but that's not really godliness. That's a nice, beautiful thing. We could say it's nature. The Torah and the commandments, that's the real metaphor for godliness. That's the mashal. That by means of the mashal, by means of a metaphor, you, Sag, you can understand and grasp. Hanimshal. <clears throat> What you're a, a higher thing that you're trying to understand. That's the whole idea of doing the Torah and the commandments. That's what it means, a servant of God. That every day, <clears throat> every day, you use your free will to do what God wants. When you do what God wants, that makes a garment for the soul. Shekahu, and this garment is something like we said, like a metaphor to be able to comprehend something higher. Also, the commandments that become a garment. So that by means of this, you can comprehend, you can uh, accept the revelation of God, which is above understanding. <laughs> it has to be done every day under the limits of time. That all these garments are drawn from their source, because the commandments, they come from the source, which is above time, but they're put into time. Which is not the case, the soul, when it's in its source, or the commandments, when they are in their source. And then they are above time. Then the soul cannot comprehend them. <clears throat> How much more so that they're not able to comprehend this ray of godliness without the garment. So therefore the commandments, they become garments 
in order to receive pure godliness, <clears throat> which is after a person dies, but especially the poor, pure godliness was going to be in the raising of the dead. By means of these commandments, the commandments came down and they became a garment so that the soul can understand them. By means of this, the soul can grasp godliness. And therefore, these are called days. That's what it means that the soul should serve for six days. That's what he said. After Moses takes possession of this Jewish servant, in other words, he draws into the Jewish people what their true identity is, namely to be the servant of God, then the soul, the person in the world, when he realizes this, the Jew in the world, he serves for six years. Why six years? Why time? It says because every single day, every element, every unit of time is an opportunity to fill with the garments of God, namely doing the Torah and the commandments. That's what it means. The soul of my master is bundled in the bundle of life. What does it mean, a bundle of life? Like you, <clears throat> it says there's another meaning of a tzor, tzor <clears throat> means that you wrap a stone in a slingshot. That's also called a tzor. By means of this wrapping the soul in the Torah and the commandments, it's like wrapping a stone in a slingshot. It throws it above. It gets thrown to a tremendous distance. Also, the same thing is the soul will raise up higher and higher into the source of life by means of what the six years that it serves, the time that it's in the world. That's what it means, six years. Why? Six years, this is the time of the 6,000 years of this world. It says that 6,000 years, <clears throat> that at least within 6,000 years, that's the deadline, that's the part of this, that there will be the raising of the dead. In the course of the 6,000 years, in this time, we do Torah and the commandments. Now you might think, if so, this is something like a sort of a, a blister in the middle of this pure godliness. It's not so. This world, this is true reality. God created the world before this world, there was nothing. When God created the world, then God was able to get pleasure. <clears throat> then God was able to be a king. Then God was able to express his will. Before that, God, he created, before God created the world, he was, so to speak, that's not a nice thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, like a man in a coma. A person's in a coma, he's completely whole, but he doesn't get any pleasure, he's not awake, he doesn't react to anything, there's no one to react to. <clears throat> the same thing before God created the world, all of his potential was just potential, pure potential. When he created the world, then God started to be, if you want to say, real. He had man to interact with. That's what it means. Ayom la sotam. That's what God then will realize that this 6,000 years of the world, this was true reality. And that we were making it real by doing the commandments. And the one that's enabling us to make it real is Moses. Moses is waking up the Jews that they do the commandments and make real reality, as we're going to talk about, God willing, more tomorrow. That's the job of Moses. Now let's learn the Devar Malchut. Oh.